You're in Hollywood. I live for this. I love this. The red carpet. It's a dream come true. The adoring fans. All the fans lined up. I feel so lucky. And the spotlight. And I just hope to inspire. Who wouldn't want the glamorous life of a superstar? I wouldn't change it for the world. But can anyone get addicted to fame? For certain people, fame can be as addictive as any drug. Fame is definitely addictive, so similar to cocaine. Like any drug, Why so aggressive? fame has powerful side effects. You said? You're it, man. You say? I take responsibility for my actions. Celebrities need adoration and approval 24 seven. And the pressures of fame can be more than what you bargained for. <laughs> Can people weather fame's turbulent storm? Or will fame tear them apart? I thought the bitch was white! I've wanted to be famous my entire life. Sometimes I'm just like, I can't believe that this, this is my world. Life inside the Hollywood bubble can be exhilarating. If you're not enjoying this, then you really should be doing something else. You get that sort of instant gratification of your fans screaming your name, and that can be a good rush. For some, after just one hit of fame, that electrifying high becomes an addiction. There's no doubt that fame is addictive. People compulsively pursue it. The reward of fame, very much like any other addictive substance, is so alluring that it overwhelms any of the negative. They're just getting more and more and more and more, but more and more and more is never enough. If you have that intensity and that rush, it's so difficult to sustain and it's so difficult to give up. A sudden burst of fame is so rewarding and the reward system in that setting is surged with dopamine. And the brain, of course, says, do that again, do that again. You have to maintain the fame to keep themselves OK. And the threat of losing it is what's the source of stress. For many celebrities, fame presents a tricky dilemma. If you're a big star, you probably don't want all that attention. But at the same time, man, it would probably be pretty hurtful if you didn't get it. That thing that you desperately don't want, maybe, is something that you need. Once you've obtained fame, the pressure can lead to unpredictable behavior. Hey, Justin Bieber, Bieber. Happy, happy birthday, my man. And the cameras are there to catch it all. What'd you say? You're it, man. What'd you say? Justin Bieber's rise was really quick. And we've seen him go through periods in his career where he was lashing out. Sometimes when you see celebrities acting out, it can be a cry for help. But more often than not, it's the idea that fame is addicting. That no matter what you do, people are going to pay attention to you. Fame can drive really old behaviors and really dangerous behaviors. <laughs> it's like we remember when Britney came out of the 7-Eleven and was smashing cars and doing really strange things that we didn't imagine Britney to do. Yeah, that's where she got you, an umbrella. There are so many coping mechanisms that have worked for so long, and then suddenly things are falling apart. They don't have the coping skills necessary to deal with fame. So this is where we see, like, ultimate meltdowns. You're, you're so, look, I'm assaulting you. Yeah, you're assaulting me. You're assaulting me. <laughs> Guys, I cannot no. see. Please, please, please move aside. People like Lindsay Lohan, who grew up in the industry, all of that you know, sort of 24-7 attention. I'm not taking this as a joke, it's my life. <laughs> was really creating a lot of problems for her. And it's the dark side of fame. It's the idea that the media contributed to a lot of their bad decisions. And it's my career and something I've worked for my entire life. And the press will build you up to see how much you can take just to watch you fall, because a lot of the people enjoy reading about the drama. The media can hunt you down and sort of make your life awful. Fame used to be reserved for A-list celebrities. Fame has changed significantly. We all know that. In my day, at least there was some kind of talent. If I'm trying to create a character, it's sort of like falling in love and 
you know, surrendering to another person. I thought I knew a lot, but man, did I learn a lot in the course of making this movie. I think in a traditional sense, fame was seen as something that was obtained by people with physical talent, athletes, artists, actors. I believe the pathways to fame have been completely blown apart. It's like the wild, wild west out there. If fame before was recognition of talent, fame today is just recognition of who you are as a person. When reality TV came on the scene, it changed everything. People come up to you and they're like, you know, they tell you how great you are and everything. Just the idea of wanting people to know who you are. So that's why you allow cameras to film you all the time. The rush of becoming famous just for being yourself can be deliciously addicting. You know, you go from an unknown name, then overnight, literally, you're on the cover of magazines. Paparazzi are following you. Your friends and your family are getting calls from reporters, and it's very exciting. Happy Topless Tuesday! Hey, guys, it's Frankie. Fame was this thing that I needed to achieve, and the way that I needed to achieve that was to get as much positive accolades thrown at me by as many people as humanly possible. For some, fame is an all-consuming quest. For Frankie Grande, it's even more daunting, as his sister Ariana is a Grammy award-winning artist. What can we expect with the new music? The unexpected. After appearing on Broadway and striking it big on YouTube, Frankie was looking for his next fame fix. Casting directors, you have exactly 30 seconds to review my application, decide that I am the number one applicant for Big Brother season 16, and to cast me so that I may come and take over the house. I knew that I needed to have more in order to stimulate myself again, in order to, to get to that place where I felt Fame. You should absolutely cast me. That's when uh, Big Brother called. Frank is about to open his Big Brother package. Oh my God, I was like, okay, cool. This is it. This is my jumping off point. Like, I need to grab this with both hands. And I did. Big Brother took Frankie to new heights, but he didn't realize it would also lead to his downfall. Big Brother is the type of show where you leave with a fan base, but you also leave with people who hate you with their entire soul. You're either prepared for it or you're not, and if you're not, then you're f***ed. Coming up. Many, many celebrities are highly motivated to do more and more outrageous things to get their fix. That's addiction. People would literally write to me on Vine and say, kill yourself. If you keep doing something Ooh. crazier, people are going to keep looking. We like watching the craziness, and we're raising that bar all the time. Being on Big Brother, they see you go to the bathroom, they see you sleep, they see you brush your teeth. So my version of fame was like completely no privacy, no privacy whatsoever. And so I embraced that at first. Frankie Grande was looking to jumpstart his career on Big Brother. Big Brother was a crazy, crazy experience. But he didn't realize his fame addiction would have serious consequences. You have to navigate fame very, very carefully because if you slip down into the negative side, it can take a very long time to claw your way out of there. Addiction is a disease of wanting more. In the early days, like it was more fame. I mean, immediately I checked my followers, which I thought was unbelievable. I was like, Whoa! how much did it go up? Um, almost 500,000. It went up. But then when it was too much, I was like, well, I can't handle this. I still want the more, but I don't have the tools to handle it all. After the show ended, Frankie was shocked by the fans' negative reactions. Suddenly, fame was the enemy. Outside opinions started to come in. I feel like I took a, a huge step backwards in terms of my fame meter, in terms of achieving anything. I was terrified. But for those seeking fame, the chance to be on reality TV outweighs the risks and embarrassment. When it comes to casting, I noticed people willing to really put themselves out there in any way, shape, or form to get booked. Fame is their Velcro. They need it. They need to stick to it. They need to be so close to it. If you have a camera on you, we feel good. I must be someone. I must be special. We like watching the craziness. That's what attracts our eyes. And we're raising that bar all the time. Do not
And with each series, that bar only seems to get higher. Let's go. Let's go. It does seem that anybody who is desperate to be noticed and desperate to be seen is going to be seen and noticed. These fame seekers appear to feed their fame addiction by doing as much. People to know who you are. She shared the same with you because I f***ed her before you, not while I was with you. Ah. I mean, look at the people who go from an MTV show to a competition show on that network, to a dating show, to any other type of show. There are some narcissistic issues there that it creates that motivation. I want to be on a reality show because, hey, it's me. And you should want to watch me because it's me. Who I am, my personality, everything that has to do with me. You'll see people that have had some success on reality starting to pursue almost anything they could do in, in the public eye, where you start wondering, why, why are they doing that? you. Again, that is you know, an attempt to get that fix of fame. To some extent, fame, sudden fame at least, is somewhat like trauma in that it can exceed your body and brain's upper limit of its capacity to regulate. That's where it becomes addictive. But in the reality TV world, you're only as famous as your last scandal. You look like you're in a bad place. You're acting out. Maybe she you just pulled out. somebody's hair out. You mm -hmm. talking about I'm acting out? It can make you do things that you wouldn't normally do to try to stay in the spotlight. Keep it together, Aviva. The only thing that is artificial or fake about me. This. Yes. Oh, Once the producers decide they don't want you anymore, you go away, and the public, you know, if they don't see you on TV every day, if you're not on magazines and being put in their face, they're going to forget about you really quickly. The difficulty for reality stars is often, if they don't have that sense of self of knowing who they are, where do they end and the reality TV begin? They become this caricature, and they become more and more and more extreme, and their lives are a car crash. I mean, don't believe everything you read, obviously, and that goes for everything you read about me, too. If reality TV made fame accessible, then social media has turned it up full blast. Social media actually brought the possibility of someone becoming famous from their bedroom just because they did something on social media that became viral. But if anyone can be insta-famous, can they also be insta-hooked? It makes fame sort of, you know, the new drug of choice. It's like a hit of Molly. You have that quick rush, and then it's gone, and you want it again. We've all gone through putting up that video on Facebook and then waiting, waiting to see what people have to say. Likes and followers, these are little zings, little rewards we get that give us little bursts of dopamine that cause us to pursue it again and again and again. If I post something and it does great and gets millions of views, I feel great about it. I'm like, oh, yeah, everybody loves it. I rock. I get happy because I'm like, oh, my god, all these people love it. Brittany Furlon became an overnight social media sensation with her outrageous six-second loops on Vine. Here's how to turn your boyfriend on by eating a banana. <laughs> I was in LA, a struggling actor. I randomly came across Vine. I downloaded this app and I was addicted to it right away. So I was like, oh, make your own little six second videos. That sounds fun and easy. Marcus! What is that? I always bring my baggage on the first date. We used to date. For sure, Vine changed my whole life. I would just ma make all these videos and then they started doing really well and I started growing this huge following. I got like five billion loops on a video on Vine. Five billion. I was like, this is crazy. It was me on the bed with my dog. So I'd go, bah, and she would stick her head in my mouth. Bah. It just went crazy. Bah, bah, bah. When I was like the number one followed female on Vine, my phone was ringing off the hook. I had all these opportunities. Vine was the perfect fit for this restless performer. I started out really shy at one point. I was like the little kid that hid behind their mother or their father's leg and was constantly like mm, peeking out. And then at some point, I don't know what happened, it just all changed and I just became this like monster who constantly wanted to perform. But after a wild ride to the top, Britney's online popularity began to dwindle, and she made a few bad choices. I had an Indian character, which was like Patel from India, and I would put a lot of bronzer on so that like I looked Indian. Do birds have dicks? 
because I never once looked up and thought, oh, that is a seagull dick. I'm just dressing up as a character. People came back at me later and were like, she's a racist. And I was like, what? Like, no, I love everybody. People would literally write to me on Vine and say, kill yourself. Coming up. What is crossing the line? I think I posted stuff that was like a little bit much. At that moment, I realized I needed help. In order to get attention, people are highly motivated to do more and more outrageous things to get their fix. Mm, I love Chinese food. What's wrong? Something wrong? Brittany Furlon shot to fame on social media, but her desire to stay in the spotlight eventually backfired. Some of her loops didn't sit well with fans. And people were like, oh, that's racist. You can't act like that. And I look back at it now, and I'm like horrified. Yo, what up? I'm Zora. Let's go explore some People were literally write to me on Vine and say, kill yourself. And I was like, oh my god, really? Kill myself? It's just really negative. I was like, there's no point in me subjecting myself to this. I've literally gotten to this point where, for my own mental health, I can't work to please people. And so I finally was like, you know what? I'm done. Brittany discovered her fame addiction could be risky. I left Vine because Vine got more toxic for me than it did positive. The social media star shifted her focus to Instagram. I take everything really personally. When I was on Vine, I had 10 million followers, OK? Now I'm on Instagram, and I have 2.6 million. And to me, I'm like, oh my god, what happened to me? You start to think, well, what was I doing better when I had all these other followers on this platform that I don't have them all on this one? The famous, their biggest issue is when things go away. If they start to see things, their followership diminishing, that's when it's a problem. And they become severely depressed. It's actually really sad, because I depend on the approval of others in order to be successful in my life, which is really depressing. But there was one positive fan who changed everything for Britney. Rock's bad boy, Tommy Lee. For sure, Vine changed my whole life. I mean, I wouldn't have met my husband, because my husband used to watch my videos on Vine. He messaged me, and he was like, hey, Britney, I think you're really funny. And I was like, oh, thanks. I was like, I like your music. The couple's instant connection led to a public romance, and Britney's profile skyrocketed. And I had huge magazines reaching out to us to buy our photos. However, becoming more famous came at a cost. People were like, oh, he's so much older than you. She's just a little gold digger. She's a slut. People who don't even know me just like went and put me on blast. And it was just awful. If I'm feeding into something negative, I try to cut myself off from it and be like, nope, not good for you. Get rid of it. You have to have boundaries. When Big Brother didn't work out, Frankie Grande tried to regain his fame by returning to social media. Social media is a double-edged sword. You see all the good, but then the bad also creeps in. The first time I'd ever been called... Far is too far. What is crossing a line? As long as people continue to consume your content, as long as you continue to make money off of it, continue to get attention, the line is really up to you. I think I've posted stuff that was like a little bit much. I mean, especially when I first started dating my husband because like we were so sexual, like we would just post like whatever the f we wanted. Brittany isn't the only one pushing boundaries. See you, man. How you been? Good, dude. You've been blowing up lately. I've been seeing you everywhere. I mean, maybe somewhere else. You know. <laughs> so Logan Paul is a YouTube personality. The key is to just not think something I'm very good at. He gained fame from making videos that were funny to his fan base. And it ended up with him doing a lot of pranks and things to get attention. With over 500 million followers, Logan Paul was enjoying the positive online fame wave. But his desire for even greater attention led him to make a terrible mistake. Logan made this visit to the base of Mount Fuji, this place called the Suicide Forest, which is infamous for people taking their lives. Do you think that's real? And he filmed himself with a dead body in the frame. Well, you never, you never stand next to a dead guy? 
it was definitely a shock to people. He faced a lot of backlash online for putting a dead person's body into one of his videos, into one of his pranks just for attention. Even Hollywood was horrified by the YouTuber's actions. It wasn't just a mistake in Japanese culture. I think it would have been a mistake in any country, any culture. I think people like Logan Paul would probably do anything to be famous, and I would blame him for his actions. There's sort of a lack of accountability, and as long as that holds true, there is no line. I've made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment. Most importantly, I want to apologize to the victim. I don't expect to be forgiven. I'm just here to apologize. I'm ashamed of myself. With celebrities, they are driven to get what they need, which is the eyes on them. And what can happen is they can feel like they're invincible. Andy Warhol said that everyone will be famous for 15 minutes. And I think social media has let people go on a lot longer than 15 minutes. Fame's addictive power can be so strong, celebrities will do anything to hold on to their 15 minutes, especially reality TV stars. Stars will go through a lot of extremes to stay famous. You can look at Real Housewives who may be engaged in battles. My oh. Celebrities have definitely called paparazzi themselves and let them know what restaurant they'll be at. You have to update them as to where you're gonna be. But at any point, their fame could all disappear, a moment many celebrities fear. Once the spotlight of fame dims, the celebrity goes into a spiral. Just like a drug, just like addiction, the brain can't give it up. They frequently get a withdrawal syndrome. If it's sudden, it can be rather profound, and there can be major depression and mood disturbances. There's also a psychological piece, which is people are going to see me for who I really am. For Frankie Grande, fame was all-consuming, but the reality star discovered he couldn't handle the fallout. So once I got off Big Brother and I was so recognized, I honestly thought I was handling it great. I thought I had it all under control. And looking back on it, like, I was terrified. I just didn't know what I was doing. I was being bullied for the first time. I was thrust into this big world where I had to fill shoes that were even too big for me. I, I really did uh, try very, very hard to uh, drown my sorrows, you know, in the traditional sense of the world, in the, the alcoholic sense of the word. And I stopped sleeping, and then I was prescribed benzos. The main correlations between uh, fame and addiction is, again, trauma. Trauma is the inciting spark for most addictions. And again, it's because you can't regulate your emotions. Um, boy, both fame and drugs are solving the same problem, aren't they? I think that fame has the power to completely destroy you mentally. People would tell me to my face, they're like, you know, we really hated you. And I'm like, oh. What? I didn't know that was possible. How could you hate me? I'm perfect. I'm amazing. It is powerful enough to, to ruin someone's life forever. Coming up. I react like a threatened man, you know? And uh, I get in trouble for it. They go into this, like, fight or flight place. They do these really extreme things that seem so out of behavior. I thought the bitch was white! God damn it! Are you okay, Brittany? Are you okay? home, you stupid move! So without fans, you're not famous. So fans absolutely can impact how you feel in your fame and in your stardom. Frankie's fame was quickly fading away, and he hit rock bottom. I had no idea who I was, and it broke me in that moment. I didn't have the skills as a human being to cope. It became so addicted to pills, like I was such a pill head. It took a ground-shaking tragedy to snap Frankie's problem into sharp focus. There has been a deadly incident at an arena in Manchester, England, where pop star Ariana Grande was holding a concert. Multiple law enforcement officials tell NBC News there are at least 20 people dead. Right after Manchester happened, I was just high on pills hurting everyone by just not being present and not being someone to rely on. And that was the thing that hurt me the most. That moment was a turning point for Frankie. 
I asked my sister for help, and she actually was the person that got me into the rehab facility where I ended up getting clean, and I have been clean ever since. While the reality star kicked his drug problem, his fame habit continued on. I still want to get high on fame. I'm going to want to be famous for the rest of my life. For certain people with certain kinds of history, fame can be as addictive as any drug. And as such, it progresses and it can have consequences. Addiction to fame mirrors exactly addiction to any substance because the brain craves that substance and it says, you want it, you want it, you want it. And it won't let go until it gets it. There's absolutely a direct correlation. In my own experience as a drug addict and as someone who's in show business, a small amount of cocaine used to be such a charge. And then it became very normal to me and I needed a lot more. It's so similar to how I needed to get more and more attention. I needed it. We have a system in our brain that is essentially responsible to, for our survival, to tell us to do that again, do it again, do it again. It's a dopamine-mediated system, so we get these dopamine surges that causes our motivational system to light up and want us to do it again. When you feel joy and elation, like when you're performing on stage, that is something that you get addicted to, right? You want to feel that feeling as much as humanly possible. But what happens when the fame high gets out of hand? It's not uncommon to have sort of fame junkieism, let's call it, in that if somebody's career as a celebrity isn't going particularly well, when you address them alternatives, the idea that, you know, maybe go back and get some training, the um, outrage and righteous indignation is uh, very similar to uh, what my actual junkies say to me when I tell them to stop doing heroin. I would say that social media and cell phones is addictive. Whenever someone likes something you do or you get support from someone, it makes you feel good. It messes with your emotions. <sighs> Go to my Twitter, like, yeah, check my Facebook. The fact that we have these devices at our disposal makes us addicts to the Hall of Fame experience as well. My family literally would be like, Frankie, Hello, can you put the phone down at the dinner table? And I'm like, no, I'm vlogging about Brussels sprouts. Like, I don't know. Not surprisingly, addiction to fame can intensify issues like anxiety and depression. When a celebrity identifies so much with being famous, what they think is it's the fame that is driving the anxiety, but it is themselves that is driving their anxiety, and it's their relationship with fame. I like being in Santa's Toyland because there was all these toys. As a child, Mara Wilson hit it big with films like Mrs. Doubtfire and Matilda. You're really a movie star now. The only stars are in the sky. The instant fame was thrilling for a while. I think that fame can feel like being on top of a very tall building. It's exciting, it's exhilarating. You feel like you are in this completely separate place. I think we looked at it as just kind of this fun experience. But from there, it just kind of snowballed. I was cast in another movie and another movie. I'm nominated for uh, Best Actress in a Comedy Film. Yeah, I'm pretty nervous. <laughs> it happened very quickly, and I don't know if we ever thought about the ramifications of it. But by the time she hit her teens, the actress had a tough time coping with being famous and already past her prime. People were saying, oh, she's not cute anymore, she's not cute anymore. And it's very hard when, you know, you're an adolescent to be criticized by strangers for that, but I was all the time. I felt frustrated, I felt like I was out of control. Fame only intensified Mara's difficulties. I think that I was a person who was sort of predisposed to anxiety as it was. Being in the public eye, it, it didn't cause my anxiety, but I do think that it added to it in many ways. I stressed about, you know, my, my appearance more than I should have because for me, it felt like it did matter. When famous people have to live in the world, they're overcome a lot of times with anxiety and depression. They have an expectation from the world that they need to live up to. They always have to be on, and you can't really tolerate that for a long time. You know, you do something that you thought was funny and you don't hear anybody laughing, it's like, oh. Like Mara Wilson, child actor Will Friedle loved the spotlight. In 1992, he landed a role on Boy Meets World, and his career blew up. 
this, this to me is just a, this is just a trip. As the series took off, Will got his first dose of fame, and he was hooked. There's chairs with your name on it, and parking spots with your name on it, and uh, the guards when you drive in the gate, how are you this morning, sir, and all. It's very easy to lose yourself in thinking all of a sudden, I'm awesome. I come and I, uh, I save the day, which is great, so it's about time. But in 1998, the dark side of fame turned his world upside down. It happened instantly. It happened with absolutely no warning whatsoever. And it was like a sledgehammer to my skull. I called the director and said, I'm sick. Something's obviously wrong. I don't know what it is. The set doctor examined him. He said, I think you're having an anxiety attack. I said, no, I don't believe you. Over the years, the pressures of fame heightened Will's anxiety issues. I went in to audition, and I had a huge anxiety attack. So I left, finished the audition, walked out, went, I'm, I'm done. Coming up. Everyone I talked to tonight said they're looking forward to seeing Britney Spears. Well, that's very sweet. I don't know why they <laughs> want to see me. <laughs> this is not people just screwing around or being spoiled. Hey, 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 hey. They totally knew what they were doing when they sent me to rehab. I'll you home, you stupid move! When you deal with anxiety as somebody who, who at the time had some public persona, I didn't want to let anybody know what I was dealing with. As much as Will Friedle was driven by fame, his anxiety attacks took him off course. I think what really compounded it was the idea that the one thing I loved more than anything in life itself, which was being in front of people and entertaining them, was now the scariest thing in the world. And I had to adapt, and this was far harder to do. It took me uh, decades. So I had to find out what I could do. Don't remind me! I threw myself into the voiceover world, and I'm so lucky in that I've been successful. You gotta do something. You're Batman. And that saved me, because I got to be in a booth, and I got to perform. He grounded me, and I wouldn't listen. Beautiful. You give me chills. <laughs> in 2014, after a 14-year break from the spotlight, Will was given another shot at fame. That was my fight-or-flight moment. What do I do? Girl Meets World was headed for TV. But could Will handle the pressure? Standing backstage, the same feeling, the same electricity in your fingers, kind of now cloaked a little bit with the anxiety. You are grappling this giant raging bull and you're going, no, I'm gonna, I'm riding you for eight seconds if it kills me. And by the second joke, it was like I had never dealt with anxiety in my life. It was the most surreal feeling of floating again. Will finally found a way to handle fame you realize I can still take the best parts of me from before the anxiety, but now I can also manage the parts that have changed my life. If you think of fame as an addiction, what's the way that you get sobriety? I think that you need to just sort of take a break from it. You can't have your life be consumed by the public. As for Mara Wilson, she decided the fame game wasn't for her. Goodbye. <laughs> People have told me that it's amazing that I walked away from show business, but sometimes certain things aren't for you or that you do want attention, but on your own terms and in your own way. I've seen the celebrities who have been held in high esteem but become sort of fed up with the, with the what they'll say, the rat race. Uh, and they'll often do something extremely different. Mara found a way to stay in the business by becoming an author, speaker, and sometimes actor. I think that I'm much happier with myself because I don't feel like I need to live up to an impossible standard. I can just be myself. But without an exit plan, the pressures of fame can become overwhelming. Fame is a form of trauma because life is never the same afterward again. I want you to shut the f up. All right, get out of here. If fame is a drug, is there such a thing as a fame overdose? And can the side effects of fame drive celebrities to outrageous behaviors? I'm sorry, man. <laughs> they go into this, like, fight-or-flight place, and their brains literally stop functioning the way they're supposed to. They do these really extreme things that seem so out of behavior. International pop star Bjork lost her cool at the Bangkok airport.
Roseanne Barr's desire for attention has also resulted in some extreme conduct. Stop doing that, I already got it. <laughs> but her tweet about former President Obama's advisor, Valerie Jarrett, wasn't only extreme, but also ugly. Are you filming? Yeah. Roseanne took to social media and offered this apology. I thought the bitch was white! God damn it! I thought the bitch was white! Shia LaBeouf is also known for his bizarre antics. But to what extent is his erratic behavior driven by fame? A lot of his behavior in the media was really just sort of being a bad boy. And we've seen him do, you know, weird stunts. We've seen him getting in trouble with the law. I raped him in America. You brought me in my hotel. You brought me in my hotel to do work. And it really seems for him more of an addiction to people paying attention to him. I wish I could be more of the not say anything and just look forward and keep it moving guy. When have you ever been there? I guy? just can't, man. If it, if it, see my personal space gets uh, threatened, I, I get threatened and I react like a threatened man, you know? And uh, I get in trouble for it. You're a Everyone I talked to tonight said they're looking forward to seeing Britney Spears. Are you for real? Yes. Britney Spears grew up in the spotlight and became a global phenomenon. Are you just saying that? Oh. <laughs> well, that's very... I'm just progressively but slowly getting it together and trying to, you know, find my niche. You can see how there was a direct line from how much attention was being paid to her and the mental struggles that she was going through. They totally knew what they were doing when they sent me to rehab. I stole from the Coming up. There's so many people out there that will do anything to stay relevant. Woo! Ah! This is the most stupid thing I've ever done in my life. My family has been going through a lot of stress and anxiety lately. Just checking in with all of you who are concerned about me. I'm taking things really slow, though, and um, I'm just progressively but slowly getting it together and trying to, you know, find my niche. In 2007, the pressures of fame led Britney Spears to a breaking point. The 2000 era where you only saw Britney, you know, attacking a car with an umbrella or shaving her head, uh, it was sort of just fodder for the media. What we've got to remember is, yes, the fame is intensifying things, but the issue's already there. It's just now come to boiling point and it explodes. In 2008, Britney's very public struggles with fame led to multiple psychiatric evaluations. No one can be prepared for the onslaught of adulation. And eventually, it starts taking a toll on their emotional health and on their well-being. The outrageous behavior that most people are seeing from celebrities is mental illness. I mean, look at Britney Spears. That was severe bipolar disorder. She is only alive today because she was put on a conservatorship that her father assumed. This is not people just screwing around or, or uh, being spoiled. This is mental illness, make no, make no mistake about it. Fame may have sent Britney over the edge, but under her conservatorship, she bounced back. So like when I get on stage, it's like really good for me to become a different character, to like release all the ang angst that I do have and become this different person because it's just like, um, it's like therapy for me. In the end, fame is the most seductive drug, and the adulation that comes from it is something that we are unwilling and maybe even neurologically unable to give up in the end. In 2019, Britney wasn't ready to give up her fame and was struggling again. Britney Spears stunning fans calling off her Vegas residency. Britney reportedly checks into a mental hospital, the tough time she's having in her personal life. So why would Britney still desire the spotlight given her past traumas? Most people who become famous have an addiction to that experience after it has happened to them. And that very, very few people are able to escape the fame dynamic. 
After the pop star checked out of the hospital, she took to social media to stop the rumors and connect with her fans. Hi guys, just checking in with all of you who are concerned about me, all is well. My family has been going through a lot of stress and anxiety lately, so I just need a time to deal. But don't worry, I'll be back very soon. What is so wonderful to see is when celebrities will work on themselves with a great team of people, get the right help that they need. Healing can take place. It's just when they're ready. Despite the trauma fame can cause, the desire for attention only seems to be on the rise, as shown in these online videos. There's so many people out there that will do anything to stay relevant. You see people on there, like on YouTube, they're doing crazy challenges and stuff that are not safe. <laughs> There's wax all in my mouth for my subscribers. 100 layers. Oh my god, I look like a freak. And they're doing them just to get people to watch. Well, by now, you've probably heard the warnings from police about the bird box challenge. This is the result of a Utah teen blindfolding herself while driving. <laughs> if you keep topping yourself, if you keep doing something that's crazier, people are going to keep looking. <laughs> In order to get attention or to get those followers, people, that reward system is constantly active and people are highly motivated to do more and more outrageous things to get their fix. She's drunk! Look at her, she doesn't even mean it! If our addiction to fame continues to grow, will those 15 minutes in the spotlight be worth the cost? There is an obsession with fame, but is it fame? or is it wanting to matter? I think people want to matter. And I think that our society says, if you're famous, you matter. And so I think really we are in the end seeking meaning. Human beings need purpose and they need to make a difference for other human beings. And if you're not doing it for that. I got Jay-Z's lips. There's a high likelihood it's not gonna feel particularly fulfilling. It was the most stupid thing I've ever done in my life. If anyone's got pepper spray, do not spray it in your face because it is stupid. I mean, people are just doing anything they can at this point for shock factor. I don't know. I mean, hey, more power to them. If that's what people like, that's what people like. I'm not going to hate on it. It's just kind of crazy. I mean, it kind of gives hope for the future, you know? Like, if you're not especially skilled in any way, if you're kind of cute, you could probably do something with it, you know? I'm probably going to want to be famous for the rest of my life. I would not want to be unfamous. Like, this is what I've asked for. I have received it, and now I have the tools to handle it, and so I am living for it. Thank you. Next on True Hollywood Story. The opioid crisis has really affected the music business. He's a recovering drug addict. Somebody puts him on opiates. That's going to go bad, guaranteed. An unresponsive passenger, they're not sure male, female, or age. My cousin told me he actually died on the plane. Demi Lovato overdosed. She went into a coma. Not on drugs. Drugs are on me. It breaks my heart. How many more have to die? 